Okay guys, before you go hunting me down with flaming torches and pitchforks, hear me out for a second. I am a huge fan of solo leveling, and I love the manhwa. But these manhwas I'm going to talk about today, in my personal opinion, can potentially dethrone solo leveling as the best manhwa ever. And they are brand new too. This video will be focused on the brand new manhwas being released that are showing potential as well as some older manhwa that will prove to be good contenders for the title of best manhwa ever. And before we get into the list, here are some honorable mentions. Ranker Who Lives a Second Time, Legend of the Northern Blade, Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint, Kill the Hero, The Beginning After the End, and Mercenary Enrollment. Coming in at number 10 is Return of the Legendary Spear Knight. The story is something that you find everywhere where main characters get betrayed and they quickly adapt himself after his return to his weak self without questioning and then take advantage of his prior knowledge to grow stronger and also get revenge. This is a highly satisfying read. The main character has both a lot of power and knowledge as well as a good head and a smart mouth. Quite ruthless, knows how to work the system to his advantage and doesn't shy away from making his opinion known even to the highest nobles, has no qualms punching even the most entitled noble brats, and is permanently in beast mode. The art is amazing, and it's so nice to look at, especially compared to solo leveling. It just has a great look to it, especially the character designs. Because of how well colored it is, and furthermore, if you guys are looking for a story where the main character gets overpowered as a kid, this story is for you. I highly recommend it. Coming in at number 9 we have Solo Max Level Newbie. Our main character is a gaming YouTuber which is basically YouTube, and was the only person who saw the ending of the game Tower of Trials. However, when the game's popularity declined, it became difficult for him to continue making a living as a gaming YouTuber. Since he already saw the ending of the game, he was about to quit playing. But that day, Tower of Trials became reality, and our main character who knew about every single thing in the game took over everything faster than anyone possibly could. So basically, it's the same kind of story. Game becoming reality, plus a system, plus dungeons, etc. Well, I won't say it's a ripoff of solo leveling. It has its own story and is a pretty good read. The main character knows everything about the game, and I realize that I have to complete every game I start. I think the subject is similar to Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint, except in this, it is a game, and in Viewpoint, it is a novel. Coming in at number 8, we have Demonic Spirit King in a world where the Miram world of the past continued onto the present. After the killer, Demonic Spirit King vanished into thin air. The Murim world was at peace. However, one day, a drug that increases the internal energy of the people of Murima appears and disrupts the balance of power. Just in time, the Demonic Spirit King shows himself to the world once again and throws the world of Murim into a vortex of chaos yet again. After reading all the concurrent chapters that were released, the conclusion that came into my mind was... The main character is hella dumb. Like seriously, his mother was correct, who the hell posts those credits on social platforms just to get popularity? Like what the fuck man? If you haven't posted those low grade copied Kamehameha, then the bad things wouldn't have happened. And then those guys who want to take revenge wouldn't know about you. Bro, like seriously. The story is somewhat predictable, like, you know someone close to the main character will die, then the main character will get some serious character development, and blah 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 blah, but the fighting was good. And who knows, it could be even better in the future. Coming in at number 7, we have the Dark Magician Transmigrates After 66,666 Years. Diablo, a mighty dark magician, was sealed due to the schemes of the Twelve Gods because he was so powerful. The Twelve can't even kill him, so they decided to seal him away. But 66,666 years have passed since then, and he descends to Earth once again. Now, it's time for revenge. Well, I only read the first 33 chapters, and so far this manhwa feels so refreshing. And the fights are awesome, and I can tell you that this is just a sating of the Strom. I very much like the part where the main character kept this personality even after living in this peaceful environment for years 
and that the author didn't try to make him your typical shonen hero who became dumb and naive just because he started trusting a few people. In my opinion, the art is almost perfect. The few characters that have been introduced so far have personalities that are unusual for this type of manhwa, and the story seems really promising. I really recommend this manhwa to everyone who likes the genre of overpowered main characters. Coming in at number 6 is Duke Pendragon. Born as the successor of a low-ranking noble household, Raven Vart wears the sin of plotting a rebellion against the Empire. To be granted amnesty, he was sent to fight demons alongside the worst core of the Empire, the Demon Core. Most say that it is a place where most won't survive for even a year. But Raven somehow managed to survive for 10. When his freedom was in front of his eyes on his last battlefield, he met the successor of the Pendragon Duke household, Ellen. And they both got killed by their own army. Because this is someone's plan all along. This is so good. Like the world, the pace, the main character, everything is, is tight. It's so easy to read. It doesn't bombard you with pop-up skill tabs, bullshit, just pure storytelling and badass actions with satisfying dialogues and nuances from the main character. I see a lot of potential in this. The main character is a Chad, but unlike other Chad wannabe main characters, this one is not corny or immature. He also thinks and has class. Mind blowing, right? That's fucking rare. Coming in at number five, we have Return of the Flowery Mountain Sect. Our main character, Chung Myung, a sword saint from the Great Flowery Sect, defeated the devil Chunma, who has brought upon destruction to the Murum world. All of the nine great sects who helped defeat the demon had also been killed, and Chung Myung is now on the brink of dying but he manages to behead the devil. As he died, he was reincarnated to a child's body from the beggar's union, and with his surprise, he finds out that 100 years had already passed after his death, and the great flowery sect had not existed anymore. He plans to regain his strength and solve the mystery of his previous sect's disappearance, and as he continues this path, he will face many obstacles. One is the return of the devil and conquer the Murum world. I have seen too many manwas with the same plot. Rebirth, revenge, resolve, but still doesn't disappoint me at all. Especially since they would add a bit of a twist and uniqueness to it. What I love about this one specifically is the art and the gore. The story is great, the plot is great, art is definitely top tier, and it's not too cliche. So you should read it. Coming in at number 4, we have Return of the Disaster Class Hero. There are a total of 13 heroes, and the main character is the strongest one of them all. During a raid on a dungeon, he is betrayed by one of his companions, who backstabs him and throws him into a pit full of monsters. Everyone thought he was dead, but after some years, he managed to come back to Earth. This time, most of the things have changed. The 12 heroes who used to be his companions are big shots now and the main character wants to find the one who backstabbed him and take his sweet revenge. Art-wise, this is a delicacy. The fighting scenes are marvelous. The main character is overpowered from start, and the story is nothing new, but it is still satisfactory. This is a good manga, like solo leveling, with an overpowered main character, but honestly, I think it will be much better in the future, because this is the next project of a studio who made solo leveling. So yeah, I am looking forward to it. Coming in at number 3, we have Leveling with the Gods. The story is an extremely strong character who is unable to beat the Outsiders, as powerful as he is, and his comrades seem to be as well. The Outsiders seem to be an evil force that will destroy the tower. Not entirely sure yet. He is given a chance to go back in time through the sacrifice of his friends, and from here, it reads like any other reincarnation RPG like manga. He knows all of the hidden rewards and things he has to do to get as strong as possible to be able to fight against his future enemies as he climbs through each floor. This is a definite must read. The read is quite similar to Omniscient Reader and Second Life Ranker, but it has its own unique elements to it. The main character is an absolute badass and the action scenes are all extremely thrilling. Within the first 21 chapters that I have binge read, I can confidently say that this is one of my favorites just below solo leveling. But 
it's totally going to catch up soon. Coming in at number 2, we have Talent Swallowing Magician. The story is good so far, where the main character is talented, but due to his disease, he can't use magic. But he has a pendant, lift by his family, which swallows magic. This one is actually a pretty solid fantasy manhwa. The art is pleasing to the eyes, the story has a kick to it, the main character can receive powers by absorbing high-grade demon kings, and the main character is the evil kind of guy. He is wise, smart, and persistent. He looks like a softy, but he won't hesitate to smash your head if you mess with him. His body will also change just a few chapters, so if you don't like this softy look, trust me, it'll change. So be sure to read it. And number one goes to Reincarnation of the Suicidal Battle God. In a world in chaos because of a demon lord, the last surviving human somehow injures the mighty demon lord before he dies. In heaven, a god informs him that he had embarrassed the demon lord, with other gods wanting the man to reincarnate to see if he could do the same thing or not for their entertainment. He is now reincarnated with the same power he had when he died, and with the knowledge he possessed of the future. Will he succeed or fail? So far, the beginning is just a slave labor arc where he has debts to pay off from a corrupt church and manual labor has done by dungeon mining and monster killing. So far, because of how early the webtoon is, I can't do a more thorough review than this. But it is so damn good and satisfying to read. That's why it is in the number one spot on this list. And that is our list for the day. Thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, then please be sure to leave a comment down below and don't forget to leave a like and definitely don't forget to subscribe. And as for now, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one.